Hello, thanks so much for checking in again today. Trevor Russell here. I am a business growth consultant, coach, speaker, sales trainer, and someone very committed to supporting people in business and in their careers to really help them achieve uh, the business success and the career success that they so very much desire. And uh, it's my honor to do this work. Okay, so in today's training video, our power plan for achieving your ideal clients and sales revenue. If you are in business and uh, you're wanting to know how to achieve uh, growth this week, this month, this year and beyond, these are principles that I have studied, seen and learned that you may already know, uh, which uh, I'm sure many of them that you would if you're already in business. But as I like to say, uh, like going to the gym, it's all well and good to know things. However, to keep going back and forth and uh, doing what we need to do is going to help us get the result. We don't go to the gym once or we think about going to the gym to stay fit and healthy. We go and exercise consistently to have a healthy, uh, robust body and health. And the same with our business to have a healthy and robust client growth, customer growth, sales revenue growth plan and process. We very much need to do these things on a consistent basis so that we can continue to get the results that we want to get. And uh, this is just a small part of my client, uh, attract clients, grow sales, online learning system with the details below if you're interested in that program. And if you're part of that program, happy to have you here with us. Pleasure to see you here. Thank you, uh, because it's all well and good to go and invest in a program, but to actually listen in and uh, do the study and the work is where the real gold and success comes from. So let's continue. Okay, so as I said, uh, do you have a goal or dream to make sales, achieve growth targets, and uh, really make your business and career position a success? And while, as I said, you're the type of person watching this video that would know a lot of this, maybe at some level, to a lesser or to a greater degree, you are not happy with the results or you're not achieving the results because of whatever reason, competition, uh, performance, whether you or the team, uh, and you want to improve or you're already doing very well and you want to take growth to the next level. Uh, yet the problem very often can be uh, that I observe in a lot of businesses is, which are the things that I'm going to cover here is, there are some fundamental basics that we can forget or that we don't know that we need to continually remember and revisit to have us get the results that we want to get. So what I'd like to do is go through those with you now and uh, share with you two elements. The first element is the technical element and then the next element, which is the emotional and more soft skills element, uh, which I see is probably the biggest lacking area in both small to large businesses when it comes to having a truly proven and effective uh, business growth, sales growth approach and uh, skill set to have us achieve these goals. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so from a technical perspective, uh, here's the funny thing that I see. As you will see, review and plan out our ideal number of clients and sales target. Pretty simple, right? So if we were to figure out an average client, you would want to sell 20 houses in a year and each uh, commission uh, on the house is $10,000. You want to make $200,000, you achieve your goal of $200,000. Now, a lot of people don't do this and it's very interesting for me to see people in business that don't plan out their sales targets. And if you do plan them out, congratulations, because if we can't see the goal, how can we hit it? Now, we don't necessarily need to know all the ways as to how we're going to achieve the goal, but having the courage and the willingness uh, to determine what that goal is, I know in my life and for the people that I see that are very successful and the places where we have implemented these, we achieve far greater results. Because even if we set the goal here and they were previously performing here, 
and we get to here, it's still far in excess of their um, break even point, and they could be moving into 10, 20, 30, 40% profit margins when before they weren't even conscious of really what was going to get them there. They were just kind of skirting on the edge of either uh, in the negative or break even on this constant struggling treadmill. You may know this yourself, but to really set some targets and plans and go, well, where do we really want to go? Where you're operating at a 20, 30, whatever percent gross profit margin and everything's paid for to really get our focus to that level. So then we want to break it down. What are the number of products or clients or sales uh, that is going to allow us to achieve that result? Now, this is uh, very much a uh, comprehensive process that depending on how many products that you're selling or services that you deliver, we need to be able to sit down and work that out. And you may already do that with your accountant or with yourself or your, um, your administration team. Uh, but again, really staying present to that and really focusing on what it is that we want to do, not looking back, but constantly looking forward to where we want to go and then start figuring out how we can continue to do that. And then we want to see the figures. In other words, where our, foc where our attention goes, uh, our focus goes, our results show up. So a bit like, as we know, I know it's such a cliche example, but you want to go and buy a black BMW, let's say. And all of a sudden, you start seeing black BMWs everywhere. Same thing here. With our ideal sales figures and revenue targets, what is the figure or what is your career income goal that you want to achieve that if you generate enough sales and bring in the business is going to allow you to achieve that income? I actually, uh, uh, for those of you in my uh, Attract Client to Grow Sales program, you will already have the cash flow planning tool. And for those of you that are watching this that want it, I have a cash flow planning tool where we can look at each week, each month and forecast money in, money out to determine where we're at and we're achieving our sales and revenue goals. This I have found to be so powerful and very much a, 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 the basis of a lot of work that I do with clients and that I've enrolled people to help me with, which is to discuss it and ask how. And this is, uh, as we see what board of directors do of advisory boards is, what do we do? How do we fix this? How do we change this? How do we achieve this goal? What is it that we need to do? And those of you that I'm working with, this is a lot of what we do. It's like, well, okay, you want to fix this. You want to reduce that. You want to make that growth target and bring in more customers, more sales, more revenue. How can we do it? Where do we prospect? Where do we fill the gaps in our sales process so that we can achieve these goals? And then we want to review, as I just said, our sales process and fix the gaps. Now, if I was to ask you, do you even know your sales process? In other words, whatever business that you're in, whether you're a financial planner, an accountant, you're in a retail store, uh, you're the, manage, the sales manager for a banking institution, uh, whatever it is, the sales process of how a customer or a client is uh, marketed to, attracted to, all the touch points along the way that you can assess and look at to determine and fill and improve the gaps so that becomes so much more streamlined. And yes, this is a lot of work. However, you know, it's our business, it's our career, and the way I look at it, it's well and truly worth it. But very often when we look at these things, it's not as hard as what we may have thought it would be, and it's quite often I find it's a bit like writing that report that you possibly don't want to write. We put more energy into thinking about doing it, and when we've actually done it, it, it takes a third of the time and a third of the energy. Great book uh, by um, Thomas N. M. Redman, uh, Selling from the Inside Out. In this book here, uh, sales process, broken down, really simple. But what he's done is he's addressed every touch point of when a client or customer comes into the business and whether they are uh, enrolled or not enrolled and, and what the process is. So something that I think is so valuable for any business, uh, both uh, large and small, or if you're in a sales position and you want to know all the elements, if you want to be an A grade player, if you want to be really outstanding, you want to understand your sales process. And uh, I can help you build that if you'd like. 
uh, but if you've already got one, this is so important. Okay, great book by the way. Uh, I've spoken to Thomas too, uh, lives in Texas I think, but yeah, great guy. Okay, so some technical skills, right? And um, if you want uh, some more uh, documentation around this, uh, with how to plan and break this down, email me and I can send those to you. And like I said, for some of you who are in my program, or I'm working with you already have that. Okay, so now let's look at, thanks for staying with me, by the way, I hope you're learning some great stuff because really, sales and marketing uh, for our business, it is, I think, the two most important areas uh, because unless we can generate a consistent flow of clients and customers and skillfully and effectively have them buy from us, all the rest doesn't matter, right? Because unless, as you know, we have cash flow and a consistent flow of revenue, all the, ma all the rest is not gonna matter. We need to know how to do that well. And I see time and time and time again, and before I even go through this, even ask yourself or think about your team, how effectively do you really know how to skillfully meet with someone and enroll them to being happy paying customers and clients, whether it's in the store or whether it's um, you know, a client or you're a logistics company, or do you have the process and do you really know how to do that? Uh, maybe you do, which is congratulations. Maybe it needs improvement or maybe you don't, which is why you're watching this, okay? So more the soft skills, uh, however, I think uh, on the back of the, the technical measures of us knowing what our numbers are, these, I find, these 10 areas are so often the areas that people just continually need to work and improve. Some of them they don't even know how to do or do at all, and we have to upskill them to know how to do these things well, and when they do, look out. Careers grow, businesses grow, success grows, and that whole excuse that, oh, the market's quiet, people aren't buying, there's too much competition, that all goes, because there is plenty of business out there. Some things have changed, yes, margins have changed, competition, online, offline. However, we need to change with it if we want to survive and thrive. Okay, number one, decide. Again, may sound a bit cliche, but decide that you want to fix the situation and be responsible. And we're going to talk about this in courage or courage. Very often doing a lot of these things is going to be confronting and it's going to mean digging deep and getting some courage going. Because very often we have to do some things here about changing attitudes, upskilling, how we manage our teams and staff and what we do, which I'll go through in a minute. But deciding to really do that as opposed to kind of skirting around the edges and everyone kind of walking a bit on broken glass as opposed to really eating the frogs. What does eating the frogs mean? You may have heard me say this before. In the words of Jim Rowan, uh, no, Zig Ziglar actually, he actually said, if you've got to do something that's really confronting, uh, do it quick, fast and early, like eating a frog, because it's not going to get any prettier. So we need to do some things at times that are not easy, and I have full respect for you. Uh, if you're watching this and you're in business, I'm sure you know the challenges and the difficulties that I know we can all face. But deciding, and I promise you, if you work in these areas and you see value in them, it will help improve things. Okay, so what do I mean? Decide to fix, be responsible. The right person. What do I mean by the right person? I mean uh, hiring and employing the right people as best as you can in the right positions. Because so often, uh, if you've seen my other videos on working to your strengths, one of the things that I use is the DISC profile. And so often, uh, director, influencer, conservative supporter, if we are talking today in this training video about client growth and sales, and you have a conservative introvert in a position of business development, and these are one of the greatest challenges for accountants, financial planners, bookkeepers, because now more than ever, they're in this position where they need to go out, generate clients, improve sales revenue, and they're not built to do that. If you are one of those people, it's okay. It's not your natural style to have conversation, lead people, because many of you are introverted and quiet and want to do the numbers, 
Um, so this is a very challenging place for supporters and conservatives. I'm working with a client. Um, they have a lot of people doing uh, sales work on the phones. And when I assessed all the sales team, a lot of them were this supporter style. Very good at yes, thank you. But to get them to ask for money, get the deal, keep people moving through and um, doing the sale, they needed more influencer styles and they, we realized that we needed to hire more people, the right people, which has been very challenging for them. However, what's now starting to happen is we're getting an improved result because we've got the right people in the right roles and being smarter with how we manage our teams. The greatest challenge that I see is people getting angry, leaders and managers, very often, quite often from director styles, why can't you do it? You, you, you need to do it. And what we find is very often the person is in the wrong role. Not always easy for that person in the role because obviously we don't want to lose jobs and stuff, but so often to get a plan to move to a place where they're better suited works so much better for everyone, frees up everyone. But again, deciding, courageous, there's some work involved. Okay, fixing all the leaks in the business or the company or the division. Again, where I see declining sales, problems with growth and all the rest of it is because very often this is a very hard pill to swallow, babysitting. What do I mean by babysitting? Babysitting people and employees in roles that if you are watching this as a CEO or a managing director or a manager, in keeping people in roles that they're not meant to be in. And this is uh, entirely up to obviously the company and the business. If uh, that's the case uh, and the company can afford it, great. But if it continually is affecting the business because we're babysitting people in the wrong roles or they shouldn't be there anymore, how can we move things uh, forward to help people either change their careers or go somewhere else um, or just clean the mess up and get it done, get it fixed? Because uh, I was working with a training company last year and they literally have a person that should not be in a role because they're rude, they're impatient, they create constant problems, but they just do not want to get rid of this person because it's going to mean a couple of weeks of disruption and all the rest. So they continue to put up with it, but it has a huge overall cost to the future growth of the business. Um, attitudes. Attitudes, which is attitudes in yourself. Attitudes in your team. If um, you've got people that are bullying people, so often I've seen in companies where, you know, the senior managers, they know that there's bullying going on, but they don't want to confront the bully. They don't want to disrupt. This has a huge, huge impact on the company, on sales, on clients, on team satisfaction. And these are things that have nothing to do with trying to figure out how to build an online marketing system or how to teach someone the seven steps to how to consult and enroll clients. These are very, in a way, quick and simple things that can be fixed and cleaned up, moved on, Clunk, fix it. Let's get eat the frog, get it moving, so we can open up the door for better and newer and continue to grow and have a prosperous, successful business. So. Those of you watching this, if you know who that is and what you need to do, decide, take the courageous step and do it. It'll be better for you, it'll be better for them, it'll be better for everyone. Okay, is your way, um, does it need to change? Is it old and outdated? Do we need to look at improving how we sell, how we market, how we do things? Uh, I was working with a company last year Unfortunately for them, the uh, CEO uh, was uh, in a place of we do it this way or we don't do it at all and they were going broke. And it was very tragic to see because unfortunately for whatever reason, ego or fear, all those things, um, the company is now going into liquidation. However, the companies that are willing to continually evolve and change and look at what we can do to improve our ability to communicate, market ourselves, train, support each other, grow, continue to thrive, which is what we want and which leads us to the next point. If I was to say to you, if you're in business or you're in sales, 
Do you train yourself or your team on how to effectively sell and enroll? Because I will see people spend money on going to Facebook courses. I will see people going to courses on how to use the accounting system. I will see companies and people do all these things, but to truly understand how to grow a business, sell with skill, if I was to ask you, do you support yourself or people that are in the business of sales to be your best at that? If you don't already do that, this is a must, must, must place. Both from internally as sales managers or leaders, we must encourage, and I bracket the word courage in this word encourage, because encouragement, accountability for you and the team is more important than ever because uh, we all need encouragement, we all need support, especially in the area of sales and business development. It can be very stressful, very tiring. And that old school of punishment and abuse and go do it without supporting them, it's just a formula for disaster. If we want a formula for success, while you may know this, you may not know this, simple soft skills, directors, leaders, managers, let go of the ego, support our team, have them be the best, have them achieve the results, give them the credibility, give them the reward, and if it's you that wants reward, it, so much more will come back. But we must support our teams if we want to get greater results. So train, encourage, um, and accountability. A lot of the work that I do personally is to hold people to account. I had a gentleman that I was working with last year, I point that way, excuse me, that must be last year, he was doing outstanding results. He couldn't even do a $100 sale. We moved into six, seven, nine hundred dollars sales for strategy sessions by teaching him how to sell and consult and enroll clients and do proposals. And, um, and then, you know, we finished up and he went off on his way. And then we only met a couple of weeks ago and he said, I can't do it. And I said, are you doing this? Are you doing that? He goes, oh, no, no, I've forgotten all of that. So now we're re-engaging to get him back on track, to hold him to account, to do these things, to get the result. That is why this accountability and support is so important. Prospecting. Do you have a plan of how you prospect? Do you know where they're coming from? Now, for some of us, this may be a no-brainer. If you're an organization and you've got a robust marketing plan and you do a whole lot of online marketing and offline marketing, uh, whatever it is that is generating your leads and inquiries, making sure that we have a plan. Now, I use a process which is called a one-page marketing plan. And it's, what are the top five or six things that we're doing to generate leads? And then what are we doing five or six things to convert those leads? And what I'll talk about in another video is how to consult and enroll a client process. This is a process that uh, I teach my clients, it changed my life, but how do you confidently and skillfully sit with a client and walk them through from start to finish on determining if and how you can work together and enrolling them. And when I learned this process, it was life changing. For those of you that are in my program, you are learning this process. And uh, for those of you who want that process, it's in this book. Uh, but if you are watching this video and you Ask yourself, can I confidently sit with someone and know how to go through and take them on a journey to consult with them and enroll them with skill or determine that I can't work with them? That is something as a must, must, must important sales, modern sales um, skill that everyone must have. I've taught this to real estate agents. I've spoken to real estate agents that have needed to improve their conversion and showing them how to qualify clients and determine because it builds collaboration in this process as opposed to will you please buy from me energy life-changing works for everyone proposals that enroll uh, determining the process and knowing the process of how to uh, propose to someone that has them read it and they go I've got to work with this company there is a formula to this process of knowing how to propose and enroll clients the good old follow-up We've done the meeting, if we haven't enrolled on the day and we've got to do proposals or uh, um, put a plan together and we've got to follow up and enroll them, 
the follow-up, still fortunes in the follow-up. I have a client at the moment, he's a mortgage broker, and he said he needs help to stay focused and accountable on following up because he goes out and networks and the, the, the fear gets in, the monkey mind gets in, and uh, he loses all these, all these clients because, or potential clients, because he doesn't follow up. So there is a formula, there's a script and a process to do that. And if we do it, it works. If we don't do it, it doesn't work. Enrolling and getting the sale. As we can see with the formula, if we do these things and we know how to enroll, we know how to get the business, whether it's someone walking into the store and getting the sale, or whether it's a major $100,000 or whatever uh, sale, following the process, as you may already know, is still the same. And then, if we've done our job well, we do great service, we give great service, because again, this is a bit like the simple things that can be sting a little bit to clean up, but seriously, it's kind of like there's a pole, there's a panel missing in the fence, all you need to do is go and nail a new one on there and rip the old one off, yet so often we can focus on all the other things when it's so simple to fix. Great service, I think, is something that's so simple to do, yet so often completely forgotten. Why? Because there are, we've done all this work to get them in, and if we destroy it here, oh, nothing's changed. We want to be able to give great service, and I love seeing so many online companies now are bringing back the ability to talk to someone on the phone. Uh, Square, the online payment system, you can ring someone and talk to them. It's fantastic. Square, if you see, ever see this video, you guys are rocking it. You're doing great work. Your service is excellent, and your technology is outstanding. I love it, and the fees are very competitive. Thank you. Okay, so that is our technical side to planning out our sales and growth targets. So you've got a power plan for this week, this month, this year to grow your business, grow your sales. And if you go back and watch and listen to this and you take notes and write it out, I know that if you take these actions, you will get a 5, 10, 20, 30, 50% increase depending on how hard you want to push this. If I can be of help, I'm here. You can contact me, details below. And if you're already in my Attract Client Grow Sales program, we're obviously doing this work and I'm sure you're already getting great results too. And look, as I come to an end, on the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you about motivation and why it's not enough in the whole pie of wanting to build um, results and outcomes, motivation. You know, it's only one element and what we can do to add to that pie to actually turn motivation into results. And if you're still watching this, I just wanna say congratulations. And you know what, thank you so much for listening in because we now live in the world where most people have the attention span of a tadpole and uh, reading and studying, learning, and sadly is a declining ability for people. And it's gonna be interesting to see what comes in the future. However, if you are doing this, and that's not for everyone, I know there's also a lot of great people doing great study and great work out there. But if you're watching this, Thank you, I really appreciate it. I hope you found this helpful and uh, clearly you're a high achiever and you must have some driving why to be wanting to study and listen to this program, this education. And if I can ever be of help, if I'm not already working with you, please touch base with me, let's have a chat. We can determine you know, where you're at, no matter what you're doing, whether you're in business, you're in sales, um, you're a company leader, we can take a look. Maybe we can, maybe we can't, maybe we can do something, but always my pleasure to do that. Okay, I'll see you on the next video, but I wanna leave you with this closing uh, explanation metaphor. Down the bottom here, uh, we have two tanks, and if we call this tank positive energy, this level, and this level, what does this S mean? Well, have you ever seen the movie Monsters, Inc.? Monsters, Inc. is a children's and adults uh, animated movie where the monsters would go into the kids' room and they'd scare them with fear to get the energy to run the monster city. So they used fear to get the energy and they got a little bit of energy. Then they figured out that if they went in and got the kids laughing and having fun and enjoying what they did, they got so much more energy. This is what I see and feel is coming and changing in our world of business, corporations, 
maybe it will, maybe it won't, but a lot of people are starting to embrace this. If you, if you want to achieve growth, sales, clients, if you're a leader watching this and uh, um, you're not getting the best from your team or from yourself, maybe it's time to have a look at, are you treating people as a slave? Or are you being a supporter? Because what I see out there when organized, and I'm not saying it's a free-for-all and people shouldn't work and don't need to do their jobs. What I'm saying is if you decide that you want to figure out how to be a better supporter and help people get the results that they need to to keep their job, but also not from a place of punishment and whipping, but from a place of drive, education, motivation, support, how you show up as a leader, as a manager, as a sales manager, to show them and lead them. This is where I see the greater results are coming. I'll leave you with that. Thank you, I'm Trevor Russell. I look forward to seeing you on our next training video. Bye for now.